about three steps behind this strapping blonde white guy, both of us carrying our books, both of us hustling down the same street to get to class. As the white guy walked past her, this lady stopped me to ask if I knew anything about a bicycle that had been uh, stolen uh, from a bicycle rack. When I complained about being singled out like this, why did you, you know, not stop you know, the, the, the guy who came out ahead of me also? I was told I had no right to be upset given that USC sits in a high crime, largely black community. Innocence. 35 years ago, I was driving home from a Jackson's concert with my wife through a moderately well-to-do white neighborhood when two policemen pulled us over. Using the public address system, they ordered me out of my car. I stepped out, my hands lifted as I had been ordered, and saw that the officer was holding a gun on me. Later, when I asked what this was all about, why he had stopped me, he told me that my tailpipe was smoking. <laughs> Innocence. 24 years ago, an African-American drunk driver named Rodney King pulled over after leading Los Angeles police on a chase. In an excruciating beating that was captured on video, four police officers took turns teeing off on him with batons, inflicting injuries that very nearly killed him that would take four surgeons five hours to repair. All the while, King was crawling about on his knees on the ground, trying to escape the onslaught. When I wrote that this video finally proved the kind of curbside justice to which African Americans, uh, or about which African Americans have complained for generations, many readers told me that King brought the beating upon himself because he kept moving. Innocence. Nine years ago, I wrote about how Martin Lee Anderson, an A and B student who wound up in a so-called boot camp after taking his grandmother's car for a joyride, died after being punched, manhandled, and choked by guards who then placed hands over his mouth and forced him to inhale ammonia. When I lamented this tragedy, readers wrote to me about how African Americans should take more personal responsibility for themselves. Stop committing pretty much all the crime in America. Stop having babies out of wedlock. One reader I'll never forget told me that the guards who killed this boy, quote, did us all a favor. Innocence. Seven years ago, when I began finding it necessary to write columns uh, saying that the President of the United States is not a Muslim, a socialist, a terrorist, and was in fact born in Hawaii, and Hawaii is in fact the state of the United States, <laughs> and that it is not right to call him uppity or boy, nor to compare him to a chimp, nor to raise a sign demanding death for him, his wife, and quote, your two stupid kids, nor to yell out, you lie, as he is addressing a joint session of Congress. Readers told me that I was only saying these things and making this defense because I am a racist who only supports the president because he is black. Innocence. Three years ago, when an unarmed boy named Trayvon Martin was shot to death by a self-appointed neighborhood watchman named George, Thorman, uh, George Zimmerman, readers told me it was because Trayvon was a thug. Innocence. Last year, when African-American activists began chanting him, raising signs to remind a nation that sometimes seems to forget that black lives matter, people complained that they were somehow saying white lives do not. Innocence. In June, when a deranged white gunman shot up a storied church in Charleston, in this, uh, South Carolina, killing nine black people because they were black, a reader of mine posted that it never happened, that it was only a hoax perpetrated by liberals. And yeah, I am aware that he is virtually alone in that opinion, and that most healthy minds, black, white, and otherwise, know that the Charleston shooting was no hoax. But I mention that only to drive home how critical it is to some of us, the desperate lengths to which they will go to preserve that thing they cherish most where race and racism are concerned. Meaning, of course, innocence. We live in a country where African-American unemployment is usually double that of the nation as a whole. A country where, according to multiple studies, African-Americans receive less aggressive health care from doctors 
than whites do, even when they have the same insurance and the same income. A country where African Americans account for about 15% of drug crime, yet in some jurisdictions represent as much as 90% of those incarcerated for drug crime. A country where the mass incarceration of African American men and the subsequent abridgment of their civil rights after they have served their time has devastated families, decimated communities, and stolen away voting rights. A nation where discrimination in banking robs African Americans of the ability to start businesses, send their children to school, or simply live where they want to live. And yet, a nation where we too often agree to pretend that we don't know how those kinds of things happen, that they just are. A nation where you may try to put a name on that which is pushing you down, only to be told that those things are really nobody's fault, nobody's responsibility, that they are forces of nature, like the tides and the seasons, the random verdicts of impartial fate, beyond our power to cause or effect. Or again, as ta Coates puts it, the earthquake cannot be subpoenaed. The typhoon will not bend under indictment. And as James Baldwin reminds us, it is this innocence that constitutes a crime. This idea you are asked to accept that, well, bad things just happen. And if it seems to you that they always happen to you, well, that's just your paranoia. Or it's just random bad luck. Or it's evidence of your unluckiness, or it's proof of your own unworthiness, or your shortcomings, or your failure to anticipate and prepare. It's your fault. You should have done better. Rodney King, he should have just stopped crawling around on the ground. Trayvon Martin, he should never have worn that hooded sweatshirt in the rain. President Obama should have just released his long form birth certificate. Because it never is what it actually is. Always it is something else, something other. This insistence upon innocence extends even to how we understand the past. 